Hi, my name is Christy Hubler and I am FabricatedFrames.com and this video tutorial is to show you how to take Zazzle Fabric, the new fabric program where you can print your own fabric or buy someone else's fabric by the yard, by the fat quarter, by the swatch, and you can make your own sewing crafts, your own sewing projects. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to make a house-shaped pot holder, as you can see, house-shaped with eaves and roof, and has a pocket that is coordinated and aligns with the pattern underneath the house-shaped base panel. It has a pocket, as you can see, and uh, you do you hold it like this. So you, for example, you see that's how you would use it. As you can see, my hand. See how it is. See. So that was that is how you use it. It involves um, the Zazzle fabric. It ha you could take two panels. I have uh, uh, several pages of patterns for two sizes. One that is eight across from eave to eave by ten inches high, and the other one which is nine and a half inches across by eleven inches wide which requires two printouts to line up and I'll show you that later on in the video how to make those print them and make those patterns I have that in the video and as well uh, this pattern is called Paris Eiffel Tower Pointillism art inspired art it uh, is based on various uh, images that I seen in photographs and uh, when I went to Paris Las Vegas casino in Las Vegas back in 2001 uh, the indoor shop facades I had taken basically an amalgamation of all an amalgamation of all those images and created uh, the pointillism which is the tiny dots that make up uh, an image a piece of art uh, different colors with tiny dots that show the color reflection of the objects around it, whether it be people or buildings or grass or whatnot. And it has on it uh, the ironing board fabric on the back. It is uh, it is sewn on the bottom, as you can see right here. It's sewn across, finished that way. Uh, it has uh, two layers of, in of ironing board fabric. Uh, one for the outside, the back of the house-shaped pot holder, and there's one on the inside. Uh, there's underneath this is white cotton, a layer of ironing board fabric, the shape of both. You know, you have the shape of the house-shaped pot holder. Two layers of insulbright, which are basically cut down, no weaves, basically going, going uh, straight down. Uh, here with the peak at the bottom and squared off at the bottom, slightly uh, uh, na you know more narrow uh, than the than the width, um, because basically you need it here and you need it here. That's where you want to make sure you reflect the heat, and uh, and then this on the back. And this tab here is a strip of ironing board fabric. Where you could do different lengths. And then I put in this keychain ring, which is removable. If you want to use wood, that's fine too. You could use a wood ring. If you want to take this and flip it and make it like a loop up top where it, one goes over the other, you could do that too. But just attach it to this panel here before you attach all the other panels. Uh, and uh, the thread, you just use the most, I would say, the most... Um, the most uh, receding color, something that blends in. Uh, you'll use the gray silver thread for, for things for this, but you also want to get a roll of a color that's going to uh, blend into the background, the background color of the fabric, something that's going to recede and not stand out. I have fuchsia thread, but I thought it would be too much. Uh, it would take away from the art. That's really key. Uh, so I have a roll of gray thread and a roll of light blue thread. I use Guterman's Toady Lock. That gives you plenty for lots of other projects, too. And just, um, let's see. So it's great, and you can hang it, you know. Um, 
Dun dun dun. This music is really thick and durable, and it's using the Zazzle fabric from uh, being it's being printed by Manual Woodworkers in North Carolina. Pigment based, it washes well. Uh, let's see, it's just a great it's a great fabric. It really is, as well as the polyester poplin. So on to the video tutorial. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Christy Hubler with Fabricated Frames, and right now we are showing the uh, fat quarter of the Repeat Paris Eiffel Tower Pointillism. Uh, four different uh, groupings repeated across a fat quarter, which is 28 across by 18 inches down. And this is a fabric printed on combed cotton, and we are going to turn this, this into a let's see here, let's put it, a house-shaped oven mitt. As you can see, I transfer my patterns and keep them available on uh, on a contact paper, <laughs> the clear kind with the peel back. But you could just cut it without peeling the backing off and just use it as that and I punch out holes with a hole puncher around the edges and I insert my pins, I center my pattern over my fabric but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you instead of just printing the paper patterns you're going to take the paper patterns and print out print out your patterns and I will show you this is for the larger. This is uh, nine and a half inches from eave to eave across at the widest points and eleven inches down, which means that I'd have to print out two uh, pages per pattern. I will give you, I believe I'm giving you um, seven uh, pattern sheets. And what you do is you take, you print them all out. They have instructions. They're formatted to size nine and a half to 11 and as you could see you have uh, you would cut these and you would match this black line up to this black line and you would run tape I have packing tape because I ran out of scotch tape and you would cut around you tape the, along the black lines where they met and you would cut around the pattern and then what you do is you would transfer it to either sheet protector, or in this case two for this specific larger size which requires two sheets, and you would tape them together at the, the line where I show you, and you would just basically either take two sheet protectors or one for the eight, the eight by ten, I have two sizes. Uh, the larger one which is nine and a half inches across by 11 inches which requires two sheets of paper, two sheet protectors, or show you. or if you don't use two sheet protectors, if you don't use two sheet protectors as I'm showing you side by side in the vertical direction, side by side each other, and you would just pin, you would just pin your pattern, your, your contact paper pattern, after you tape the two edges together, uh, taping the two edges together, you would pin your pattern down and you would go and use your sharpie or you could cut around it or use a sharpie and then cut around it. Make sure both sides are, are taped together, this side and the underside. And that could be your pattern or you could use vinyl. <laughs> this is clear, it's like four millimeter gauge. It's the thinnest one they offer in Joann's. <sighs> and you would just get like a how I would say a third of a yard and you could just run it across like this and cut cut around it, pin and cut around it and just use that. This pattern size here that you're taking uh, two sheets to make, okay, you're going to use this specific pattern you're going to use this specific pattern for the main fabric. You're also going to cut out the pattern going around there. I'm going to give you another pattern for the pocket. 
and make a clear pattern on top of this. Just follow over the line with a sharpie or cut around it and make sure you have a seam allowance around the whole thing, about a half inch going all around the whole thing. And uh, you'd make one for the main fabric. You'd make a fabric, this fabric print for the pocket. Make sure it lines up. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, and you'd use this pattern for the white cotton house shape pattern and two ironing board patterns. You're going to make two of these. One facing out on the back side of the finished uh, house shape mitt and one tucked inside and I'll show you that later. And a little bit left over you make your loop. And there are two ways to make the loop and I'll show you that later. First let's get the patterns made and I'll show you how I go about doing that. And then that way you know specifically each step how you go. So let's make this cut out the patterns and then let's make the clear patterns. Okay, so you see that I have the paper, the contact paper pattern. You would use the paper that you print out after you cut, of course, around all the edges. And take the, the, the top to the bottom on, on both sides along the edge, of course. Then you take that and pin it to the clear vinyl uh, light gauge, the cheapest one that they offer, is fine and dandy, because you're just using it <laughs> because you're just using it as a pattern. And then, or again, you could use the two sheet protectors and just trace and cut around those. We'll do that next. So I pin in my holes. As you can see, I have the heads of the pin facing inward and the pointy parts facing outward. That way, you're not going over the edge of the pins. I try to keep them inside the pattern, yet it keeps your patterns down. That's a tip. So you may want to invest in a quality hole puncher just for the patterns, at the very least. And then you can cut around the edges or use a sharpie marker and uh, go around it and then cut around the edges. So I'll show you that and then we'll work on making this one as well. So you'll have two to gauge from that one and this way. You see how it works. Okay. Okay, I have used packing tape <laughs> or regular tape and taped the two uh, fold edges together side by side and now I'm going to pin these one to uh, the two sheet protectors joined together and I will cut around them and then I'm going to hole punch uh, the holes around and it's convenient because if you look where you put your pins in you know hey that's where I can put my holes for my holes for my pins to go through you can hole punch where those pin marks are so let's do that. Let's cut these out and get them hole punched. I am about ready to cut out the clear sheet protector, two sheet protector pattern with the tape uh, seam, um, covering over the seam, connecting the two on both sides, on this side and this side. However, take note. You see this line right here? This is where the top of the pocket is going to be. Hey, you notice how I matched that up with this seam uh, connection here with the tape? I did the same thing on this side as well. And then that way, all you need to do is, since this is two layered, as you can see, two layered, two layered, you could use the back side of this, because because it's two layered, use the front going all the way around for your clear pattern for the for the house shape pattern, the base. But use from here to here to here to here as you, and then across the line where the seams join, you cut the back side, use that for your pocket pattern. Clever, huh? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so I made my two paper patterns. I cut around each of the papers that printed down, and I joined them at the seams that matched up the grays and the blacks and everything. I taped across this way, and I flipped over, and I continued the tape as you can see. And uh, as far as markings here, this is, you could put the loop here, you could put the loop about here. You see where it, 
here is um, what this arrow, what this cross, I should say, this two, these two lines are. If you wanted to make a buttonhole instead of using a loop, you could do that. I would use the color of the, the, the background fabric in this. I'm going to use light blue, just for an example. I would use light blue on the front and cut and make the buttonhole from the front using the most predominant background color as your thread. Using your zigzag stitch, you could either make it vertical or you can make it horizontal, depending on the nature of the pattern. However, whatever you think looks best. Or you get this area right here is where the loop is, and you see how it kind of aligns with near the eaves. It's centered this way and centered here, right about here. That's what I'm talking about in the text and in photos. That's what I'm talking about. Having it here, sewing it here, flipping it over, and put your keychain ring or your wooden ring in here and then sewing it to itself not to the not to the back but to itself the loop to make a, the loop to hang with the ring or you could just you know loop it like this and sew across here and then you'd have the loop and hang it that way whatever you want I just leave markings for you you could even in between the layers you could put the tips in you put the loop in this way, crisscross over like this, and so here and here, and then when you trim and when you turn it out, it, it goes and it's like the loop goes out like this outside of it. You could do that too. So this piece is the insole braid pattern. It is, as you can see, slightly uh, smaller. Um, you could extend a little extra at the top where the where the ease where the um roof line is, the angled roof line, you can extend your seam allowance on those two sides and at the bottom just ever so slightly. But as you see, there's no bulkiness going through your machine. So this lessens it. You really don't need it on the sides anyway. But it gives you the insulation for when you put your hand in. That center area has the insulation, has the silver cloth ironing board fabric, has the double layer insole bright inside, has another layer of white fabric, your pocket fabric, your base Paris fabric there. You're fine. And then you will be, it'll be insulated. Really nice. So, oh, and then, as you can see, I have the, I have the patterns cut out. As you can see, I used... This one has the holes, as you can see, has the holes punched out. And that was easy. This is the vinyl. I like this one, to be quite honest, but this one lays nice and straight, and you can just put your pins through the pin marks, or you could hole punch. And as you see here, I actually, my little tape job kind of really stuck them together in the center, so I kind of had to pull it up and cut along the seam where they joined, and that's how I got the pocket pattern. As you can see, this is square, and it lines up really nicely And within this. And then use that to indicate where to fold, where to um, make your hem at the top, double it up. And um, make sure you have seam allowances, at least a half inch going all the way around. So that way you have something to turn it inside out. And when you do sew the layers together, you can go over the line twice. You can make your stitch line to join them together. If you want to, you can do that again if you really want to make sure it's secure. I do that sometimes. I always backstitch at the opening, at the beginning, and at the end, and at all corners, all corners, all the way going around. That way, it's nice and secure. And when you go to poke them out, especially these eaves over here, you won't have the thing you're using. I use a pen or a pencil, but make sure the pen is closed, of course. And sometimes I poke through, so it's really important to backstitch around all the corners and all the angles where they all make corners where your 90 degrees are do that and the not so 90 degrees which i don't remember off the top of my head what that angle is but you get my point so, <laughs> all right now we're going to put it on the fabric and figure out where we're going to lay it okay so i have the plastic house shape pattern pin and I have over here the pocket pattern tint ready to cut. Now of course, let's look close. You see how the pattern is? I have the point centered here. And initially I was going to move this point over to be centered here to feature that at the top. But then I realized I can't because 
then these two lines here, which are very, very predominant, would be off-center. So I had to center the point between the two lines, which is why we have the pattern the way we do. Now, you see how I have over here the pocket? Now, look what I did. I noticed over here, and you can use this for any um, any uh, printed repeat pattern with a motif that gets repeated. You just have to mark where everything is. You see how the line stops here? This is the bottom of the house sheet pot holder. You see how the line stops here? Right where the top of the roof angles in perspective here. And it, it butts up against the edge where this piece of art meets this the grapes and the wine bottle here in pink and orange and purples and whatnot. Okay. And you see how over here it goes near the first board of the point aluminum wood planks right here. It goes butts up against that corner and where the top of the Eiffel Tower meets the wine and grapes over here. That's where it's right that's where your corner is. I decided to shift it over. And I put the one end, or it's the exact same spot as where this end was. And I put the the other end where it meets up with the wood plank, the first wood plank here vertically with the Eiffel Tower and the wine and the corner. You see where that all ends? Let's see, I can show you. Aha, see? See where that corner ends? Make sure that it was the same used for this corner. And that's how you do it. And then I'm going to cut, um, where's the fabric? So there's, this is empty here. This is the fabric. There's no plastic. The plastic is here. The plastic is here. I'm going to cut along the middle. And that way I have a seam allowance. And I'll cut probably about halfway through here. I have a seam allowance going this way. At least a half inch from the top of this line. So you could fold it under and then fold it over again. And about half half inch down from the edge, that's where you're going to have your, your your hem, or your top seam, okay? Follow me, I'll show you in, in video after I finish one, and then we'll see, oh, okay. But first things first, we have to sew around the patterns. So we're going to have, a, we're going to sew around the edge, but we're going to cut halfway, oh, half inch away, all the way around. Around the, around the top, around the top, and all the way around to make sure you have enough of a seam allowance. Okay, and the same thing for the same thing for the pocket pattern. We're gonna have half inch going all the way around, so that we have, we have a seam allowance. We have to anyway because of the top of this. We have to flip it over. And we're gonna use that stitch line that goes around the pattern. And the stitch line that goes around the pattern, we're going to use that to line up to the other stitch lines, the other stitch line patterns. We're going to call them stitch line patterns. That way it's easy to follow because all you have to do when you put your patterns together, you make sure you pin through the stitch line and make sure that it matches up with the other uh, patterns behind with their stitch lines. I'll show you in the next in a few videos from now. A few, uh, parts later. You may wonder what I'm going to do with the rest of the fabric, by the way. I don't know. I decided I may make a frame front from, say, this area around here and apply that to um, some other solid fabrics and uh, have the frame, the picture window centered in between here, maybe. I may make a pin out of this vignette right here featuring these four pieces of art centered, a pin that big with other solid fabrics backing it to make a brooch pin, a washable brooch pin. I'll be making possibly a washable uh, fabric photo frame soon. It's washable, has removable parts. I still haven't decided what to do with this area here and this area here, so we'll see. Oh, it's got a lot of fabric here, so I have a lot of things I could do with it. Alright, let's move on. Okay, here are the two um, pieces of uh, house shaped iron and gold silver cloth fabric pieces cut out. Not with the stitch line sewn around the edge of the pattern yet. Not yet. 
pull the pen the pins out take the pattern off realign it to one sew around it and realign the pattern to the other silver claw sew around it and make a stitch line pattern for both of them see as you can see right here at the back side so i did two of them so why cut out or cut out and repin when you can do two in one shot here's the strip of ironing board fabric the silver claw it is about two inches wide by six inches long. So we're going to fold it in half like this. Of course I have my hand on the one end of the camera. Fold it. I'm going to pin it. And then we're going to sew back stitch here to here, back quarter inch, seam around, up to about here to about here. Back stitching at the corners both sides, back stitching at the end here, back stitching here. And then leave a long opening and back stitch here, go to the corner, quarter of an inch, seam allowance both sides, back stitch, back stitch at the corner, back stitch at the corner. And then we're going to snip the corners at 45 degree angles and turn it inside out and make so the opening is shut. Like you're going to be turning out a bit low. Okay, I'm going to show you that a few steps down the line. We're going to fold it in half, back side facing out, and we're going to sew. Um, around the edges, about here to here, back stitching, back stitching, back stitching, back stitching, same thing around here. Give it an opening at the top, snip the corners, 45 degree angles, turn it inside out, use a pen that's closed if you have to, or a pencil to get your corners nice and crisp and pulled out, and then you sew the opening shut, and then that's just going to be your strip right on the side. Okay, we're going to talk about picking thread color. Basically, what you want to do is you want to pick a thread. When you join the the, the pocket to the, to the main house shape piece, you want to use an inconspicuous color. You want to use something that's not really going to stand out, that's going to blend, which is usually why you pick the most inconspicuous color in the background, or usually, usually the main color that sticks out. In this case, to me, I see a lot of light blue. It blends in. If I were to use this fuchsia color, I think it would pop out too much and take away from the art. But if you want to use it, that's your choice. The main thing is you want to use a thread that blends in. I usually pick the most predominant color in the background and stick with that. You could also use brown if you want, but I'm thinking light blue would blend the best. So that's, or like this dark grayish, it's like a lavender gray color. I picked it from the roof of the round tower here, this round tower building. You can do that in the actual tower too. Um, you can do that too, but I'm gonna stick with light blue. And I have a big roll of Toady Lock by Gutterman. I got it at Joann's. Use a store coupon or a sale to go get them. That way you save money. Okay, so you see the strip, the silver cloth strip that I turned, uh, you know, face sides folded in half, face sides towards each other, back side facing out. Back stitch and back stitch and back stitch and back stitch. Same thing around here. Snipped at the corners. I got rid of a lot of waste. And so I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to do this, I'll pull it out, and turn it inside out, oops, I'm not showing it, turn it inside out, as you can see, I'm trying to get a pen, and then, oh god, this is going to, let's see, very gently, very gently pull, <laughs> and I mean gently, I really should be using a pen on this. Um, I think I need to go get a pen that way it turns inside out. See what I'm doing? Turn it in inside out. I can't get my thing all the way in. That's why I'm saying use a pen. Let me go get one. Alright, back again. And this is why I use a pen. And this is why I'm trying to do it very, very gently. Using the pen tip, as you can see, closed. And out the seams. Not to the point I'm trying not to poke through. There we go. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to remember you're here on watching this. <laughs> okay, I'm getting there. That's better. That's a lot better. Okay. Let's do this side. Oh boy. I'm telling you these things are so tiny. I'm trying to do it. 
try to do so that I don't poke through. <laughs> Very, uh, oh boy, probably wasting all kinds of battery doing this, but doing, hey, at least you fit, you're watching me as I do, right? Right. <laughs> okay, oh man, this one was a puppy. Ooh, sometimes I only do that one and I don't give that much to put through. I, I leave a very long opening, which is what I should have done with this, but I didn't. And that's okay, you live and you learn. Alright, I'm gonna turn this off, because there's no need to see you watching me do this. So this is, oh wait, we're almost there. Wait, come on, be nice. Be nice. Oh, 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 watch. I'm doing it. Oh, okay, be nice. Don't, don't go through. Oh, is this something or what? But I did it, and you do this while you're watching TV. Alrighty, I like it. Oh, look. Look at that in. Look at that in. Look at this in. Nearly squares. Nearly squares. Hold this uh, opening in. Make it look nice and pretty. Make it look nice and even. Pin it in. Sew it shut. And we're going to sew it, and then we'll make the loop, and we'll attach it to one of the house-shaped, uh, silver cloth patterns that I made. Sometimes I clip this right out here near the opening on either side. Make sure your seams are pulled out as best you can. Again, use something that's not, that's skinny, but not too sharp to poke through to help you. Okay, now I'm going to sew this. I'm going to sew, I'm going to sew here. If you want, you could do both sides. See? Okay. I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm going to iron these pieces, but <laughs> this is just to show you. I know it's wrinkled, but just bear with me. So I made the stitch line all around the whole plastic clear pattern, as you can see. And here's the loop. I connected it here. I'm not going to sew this part on yet. I'm just cutting across here. I'm going to make a little X below this hole flip over line, okay? This is just to hold it in place because as you can see I centered it here vertically and here with the eaves. I'm just sewing the bottom part on. Just gonna make a little X box, a little box and an X just to do this. Not this part, just this part, okay? With the silver thread. Again, silver thread around the silver cloth ironing board fabrics. And you can see I did a second one. So I made two of those made my stitch lines. Okay. Sew this on. And then I'm going to cut my white fabric. House shaped white fabric. With the house shape with the house shape of a knit pattern. The house shape top of it. I'm gonna cut a nice piece out and make my little hot my little house shape pot holder out of the white. Okay doke. And um also I'm gonna show you See, I made the stitch line to follow around the pattern, the clear plastic pattern for the house shape. Uh, the print design, Paris Eiffel Tower inspired pointillism print fabric. Made my stitch line pattern going around. Did it for the house shape mitt here. Did it for the pocket as well. Um, I made a line here where the plastic had ended at the top. I did not sew across it. I just went down the three sides. I stitched in, then to the plastic, then stitched down, across, up, and then stitch out. I used those two lines as my guidelines. I then took the fabric, folded it under twice, and pinned it. Now I'm going to use the blue thread and go across and make my hem. And then I'll, later on, I'll align it to the house shape pattern. And I will sew this in place where the, where the lines are and match up everything, as you can see, so it can be nice and pretty and match up. And then I'll just sew, after I sew this hem, I will then sew the pocket to the house shape piece with the blue thread uh, around where the stitch lines meet up with each other. You just poke the pins through, match up your stitch lines, and sew them together. And then you put that aside. And then you're going to put all the pieces together. You're going to put your white house shape pattern piece with 
your joined print pocket and print house shaped pattern with your two house shaped uh, patterns uh, in silver cloth and your insole bright, your two layers of insole bright. We will show how that joins after I go and make this stitch line around the white cotton house shaped panel, which is next. Then after that, we'll join it all together. Cool? Alright. Okay, so I took the silver cloth that had the stitch pattern line around it. Not the one with the loop on it. No, put that aside. You see the box it's sewn on. You see how it's not sewn right here yet. You have to, have to put the loop in. No, take put that aside. Now, this is the other silver cloth. I put the two layers of insole braid on top of it and I sewed around on top of them with the gray. Okay, now I take decided. I said forget it. You know what? I'm just going to put the white right down. I iron them. I'm going to put this right on top, and I'm going to align it so that it's all nice and aligned. I'm going to move this over slightly. And I'm going to put the silver cloth right on top, like this. And I'm going to pin, and I'm going to go around the stitch. I'm going to go around the stitch line. I'm going to go around the stitch line, and then I'm going to snip all. Well, I'm going to snip away all this white stuff. I'm not going to snip away the same old or the excess corners. No, 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 not yet. But I'm, I am going to snip away this excess white on the side, and then I will join this. I guess you could say foundation piece, if you will, to these two, but I have to join the pocket to this first. Then I'll join everything together. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, as you can see, I sewed, I put down the white fabric, then I put down the other silver cloth face side up. I put the two insole bright panels centered I sewed, I had sewn that to the silver cloth, and then I put those three joint pieces, the silver cloth and the insole braid on the top, double layer on top of the white, and then I placed this on top of all of that silver cloth facing off with the loop. Uh, I have to sew this shut, but yes, it is uh, almost complete. Um, it's ready for the fabric printed house shaped pattern panel with the pocket to be uh, sewn onto it, but first I have to sew those two on. As you can see, they're not sewn on yet. And uh, sew this, uh, sew these two together, and then put these two join panels face down on top of this, and align up all the stitch lines, pin them, and sew around, leaving a pocket here to turn it all inside out. Of course, I'm going to have to snip in, snip away, the corners, snip away excess, snip away the corners, snip away corners, snip away corner, snip in, snip away excess, snip in at the corner, snip in at the corner, leave an opening. You'll see what I'm doing next. Okay, as you can see, I'm using light blue thread and I am sewing the hem at the top of the pocket. And then I will sew it onto the house shaped uh, panel on the three sides. Okay, so the pocket is sewn. I backstitched here, went all the way down here and across and followed the stitch line and back space and back sti back stitched here. So now you have the pocket. It all matches up nicely. All of the patterns align. Now we're going to put this on top of the other pieces. So you put this foundation piece down. As you can see, the loop is sewn here, the box, and the, the other box, so it's its own, so just have it pulled that way, for now. We're going to place that silver side with the loop face up. We're going to face this, have the pattern side, as you can see the pattern through the back. It's still nice thick fabric, by the way. We're going to have that face side down with the pocket attached. So then we're going to pin all these, we're going to line the pins, we're going to line it all up, we're going to go through here, let's show you, okay, we're going to go through here, go through this little point at the top here, find the point over here, find the point here, so point, we'll put it through that point, that top point, okay, just do that for now, 
And you find the other point over here at the top of the eave. Find that point. Find that point of the stitch line. Find. Oh, you're not seeing it. Hold on. Find the point here. Find the point of the eave. <laughs> right here. So do that and put that there. Make sure they all line up. Okay, pull back in. Okay, I'm going to take it in. I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to go through this stitch line. I'm going to match it up to the other. Can you see? Yeah. Line it to there. Okay, pull as you go so that everything, you know, you get it all right. And oh, you love them. Oops, 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 oops. There we go. Push through. And you're going to do that all the way around. So if you follow my guide, you'll figure it out. Just start with the point at the top of the roof, and then then go to the eave, and match up your and, and match up your um your panel, your stitch lines that way, and then go to the center, and then do that around to the side. Go to this eave, and then do the center, and then just look through the other side to make sure that they're all to make sure that they're. Make sure that they're all, you know, lined up. You find that point, make sure when you put the pin through, like so, that it goes and meets up. Oops, it's got my skin. It goes with the other. See the other one? I'm going to hit it right uh, can, you see, can you see? Yeah, I'm trying to get the camera to check. See there? Make sure they align up. Okay. And then you pull... And you go through. Sometimes you could check the back side. Nope, 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 nope. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're doing the middle, the other side of the roof. Sometimes you could check the back side to see that. You see how it goes right through the line there? Yeah, that's what you do. So, and then just continue to pull. It's bunching up on me here. Make sure that you. Do that and let me see. And so just do that for all the sides. Um, except you want to leave an opening at the bottom here enough to get your hand through. So pin, 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 pin. Yeah, just pin all the way around, including including the stitch line at the eave. You have to do that to make sure they're nice and matchy matchy. Make sure they match the stitch lines match up. But leave an opening here. And so you start, you'll sew to here, to here, cross, up, 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 across, down, 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 do, 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 stop here. You're going to batch stitch at both ends, the beginning and the end. And make sure you back stitch at the corners, both sides of every corner, both sides of every corner. Make sure you back stitch, 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 back stitch. Backstitch, backstitch. You get what I'm talking about. Okay, that way it reinforces them. So when you pull them out and you're pointing in there trying to pull it out, it won't. You it, you won't poke through it, and it's nice and and crisp. And just make sure your your uh, corners are very nice and 90 degrees, so it looks like a house. That's important too. So let me pin this and sew it. Okay. Okay, it's pinned as you can see. It's nice and pinned through all the stitch lines, leaving an opening at the bottom, nice enough for your hand to go through to pull everything out. And look, as you can see, it goes and matches through the through the uh, the stitch lines, nice and evenly. As you can see, it goes right through. So now I'm going to sew. I'm going to sew along this inner like blue line all the way around all the way around leave it an opening here back stitch remember do your back stitching at corners outside and inside all around at the beginning and at the end and then we'll snip away corners we'll see what it looks like and we'll pull it out and we'll sew the opening the opening for the hand and we'll sew the bottom shut okay 
Okay, so we did it all together, and I'm going to turn it inside out. As you can see, I really got close, but you know what? I double stitch all the way around. Not only did I back stitch out all the corners, but I went over the lines. And, you know, so that way I could really get in here and really get rid of this excess fabric, as you could see. Hi. Thank you for watching my video tutorial on how to make a house-shaped pot holder, as you can see house sheet pot holder with the eaves and uh, the roof line uh, just to let you know this project was inspired by my father who is a real estate agent he wanted to have uh, projects um, for me to create something to give to his customers to his clients who uh, he who used him to buy a home uh, or to sell their home so he would use these as uh, gifts you know, thank you, also great for holiday gifts, mortgage brokers, housewarming gifts, these are great for that. You want to use a sports fabric for the guys, you can use that on this. Uh, the sports fabric by Fabric Editions, uh, available at Joann's. Uh, but this specific one, you could even, you know, this is... This is the deal. You wanna you wanna use this great fabric. And it's on sale at Dazzle. They always offer sales for fabric. So use the promo code and buy this. This is it's it's a it's a nice fabric. You could do all kinds of things. And I wanna thank you very much uh, for viewing my video tutorial. And you can go to fabricatedframes.com. That's F A B R I C A T E D F R A M E S dot com. And you can go to my Zazzle profile, which is fabricatedframes dot zazzle dot com. Or you could go to zazzle dot com slash fabricatedframes slash fabric. And it, that's going to be listed on the video in the description. And thank you very much for viewing my tutorial. And uh, check out the fabric at Zazzle. Thank you so much. You don't have a wand. Uh, no, I don't have a wand. I wish I did. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.